but a few years ago, a friend of mine went to Dubai, and she was there for a very short trip. But she stayed in a hotel, and she went to the hotel restaurant both nights she was in Dubai. And they took excellent care of her. And as a single female traveler, they made her feel like she wasn't dining alone, which is normally the fear when you walk into a restaurant as a lone diner. And there was one waiter in particular who made her feel really well, Gayan. When she came back to Prague, she wrote a review on TripAdvisor, on social media, about her experience, singling out Gayan, telling what a great guy he was, making him feel really good about the review. Two years later, she went back to Dubai. She stayed in the same place, and she went to the same restaurant. And in the restaurant, to her surprise, not was she only greeted by the manager who said, welcome to her, recognized the table she had dined on the last time she was there. But the best thing was, she met this guy. She met Gayan. And he had been promoted. And he told her that one of the reasons he had been promoted was because of reviews like hers. Her review had had a great impact on his team. That is some power, right? Imagine the power we have as customers. Because all of us here, we are customers. We all know what it means to get some service. And that is a powerful one. But imagine if my friend would have written a negative review. Would Gayan still have been promoted? Or would he potentially have lost his job? This is the power we have as customers. I would like to tell you another story about Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson came to a hotel that I managed four years ago, I think it was, and he stayed with us for five days. And during these five days, he had some interaction with our team, and he kept on taking cars in and out because he was going to different venues where his son was playing football. And on the second last night, second to last night, he came up to the reception to Natalie, and he told her that he had lost his parking ticket and wanted a new one. Natalie kindly informed him that if you want to have a new ticket because you lost yours, you actually have to pay a fine, as it says on the regulation when you are arriving in the hotel. Mr. Anderson was not happy. And we all know what happens when a customer is not happy. He started screaming. He started getting loud. He was not happy and he wanted her to know that he wanted this ticket for free. And when he realized he wasn't going to, he left. Now, if you go back to the statement that I had before, if that's true, the customer comes first, which I think we all would like to because we are all customers, what would Natalie do? She would give him a new ticket, right? Pretty much straight away. He would get a new ticket and he would leave satisfied and the customer is first. Now, hold it there for a second and just keep that in your mind, that the customer is first and he got his ticket. What if we take a different approach? What if we agree that the most important person is the manager? Because the manager has the power, right? What would happen then? Well, if the manager is the decision maker, then he would ensure that the employees are following the rules, all the rules. And I think most of us here in this room are employees, because I think very few are maybe as lucky and can run their own show. Most of us are employees. And we know that the rules we've been given are something we have to follow. And then these wonderful managers walk in and changes them. So, Mr. Anderson goes for breakfast the following day, and then he goes back to the front desk and asks to speak to the manager. The manager arrives, I'm the big boss, so what happens? I want to be a good guy. So I give Mr. Anderson what he's asking for, because I'm the hero, I'm the manager. Now, what happens in that scenario with the employee? They feel very small. Because what is the point of me arguing with the 
customer and holding on to the rules if my manager is going to walk in and just change it? What is the point? Why am I even here? Because if the manager is going to be the one deciding, well, I'm just going to let him decide to start with. He can decide and I can just pass on the customers to the manager and the manager will be very busy and feel very good about himself. Would that work? Same goes with the customer. We have been training for decades our customers to be really good at getting what they want. Last year I wrote a book and in my research I found there are even published articles where journalists are advising the customers on how to professionally complain to get the most. <laughs> so you walk in and you know exactly what to push, which buttons to push to get things for free. So you're going on a trip and you know that at one point you have to become uncomfortable. You have to get upset. It's not very pleasant. Is that what we want to do? So we say the customer cannot come first. Now I would like to tell you another story. In 2012, I took over Park Hotel, which was like going 30 years back in time. <laughs> the hotel had not been renovated. It was a very, very old lady who needed some serious surgery. <laughs> the only thing was that there was not a lot of money to give her the surgery. And in the four years I managed her, we moved that property over 250 places on TripAdvisor. For those of you who don't know TripAdvisor in Prague, there is 700 hotels in the city. And we moved 250 places and almost reached the top 100 with a property that the first two years was not renovated and had leakage in the ceiling. We had self-watering plants <laughs> standing around looking odd. And then we were under renovation for one year. And what was fascinating was during the year of renovation was when we moved the most on TripAdvisor. How is that possible? That is possible if you change the priorities. So let me tell you what really happened with Mr. Anderson when he arrived in the June 2015 in Park Hotel that I was managing. Mr. Anderson did same as in the previous story, he arrived, he meets Natalie, and Natalie knows that she has the full power of giving him the ticket for free or not. She also knew that the whole reception team had been discussing for the last four days about this guy who has not only been rude to them, but very suspiciously taking two cars in and out, but he had only paid for one ticket. So Natalie decides not to give him the ticket for free. She informs him that he has to pay. And what does he do? He asks for the manager. And who's the manager? Moi. <laughs> so I arrive and I take Mr. Anderson to the coffee shop and we sit down and uh, he starts getting loud and uh, upset and telling me what a bad person Natalie is and I should train my people differently and I should and I should and I should. And I look at him and I said, I agree with Natalie. <laughs> I think you should pay for your parking ticket. And by the way, we don't really like people who behave like this to our people. So if you're going to continue being rude and not behaving nicely, I suggest that you pack your things and leave today instead of tomorrow. <laughs> As the conversation goes on, Mr. Anderson grows very quiet. And then just to like silk it off a little bit, I turn around and say, oh, by the way, I love responding on TripAdvisor to people who complain. <laughs> because that is a power TripAdvisor has given us lately. We are allowed to respond and we can say what we honestly think and how the experience was for us. Then happens something really peculiar. Mr. Anderson, after he'd been quiet for a while, he starts telling me how much his wife loved the interior decoration of the 60s in the bar. <laughs> I, completely out of nowhere. I'm not making this up. And then he looks at me and he says, he stands up and says, thank you. And he gives me a hug. <laughs> and then he walks off and he goes to the reception and he shakes hands with Natalie and he never came back about a paid parking ticket. So how is that possible? 
that he got so happy? It's because you're changing the game. When leadership and management change the game by putting the employees first, you're changing the whole story. Because when they, like Natalie, feel safe to make the decision, they know that the management is having their back and supporting them. They can also become more engaged in their work. Like Camilla, they came to me after two years crying, telling me that she'd been promoted or she had gotten a fantastic job opportunity, which was above her level. She'd been offered to become reception manager in another hotel. But she was crying because that meant she would leave us. Also, when we had an electricity breakdown in September 2015, I was busy dealing with a client who organized a thousand people event in our hotel. My FMB team, food and beverage, for those who don't work in the business, we, they decided just like that to go and stand on each landing of the 10 story building to give out snacks and drinks to the guests when they were trying to walk up to their rooms because the elevators doesn't work. That kind of inspiration you will not get for free. That comes when people feel they are being part. They take responsibility for their situation. So, what are our conclusions from this? If we, as customer, which all of us are in one situation or another, take better care of the power that we have and become more empathetic, we will create a better atmosphere. And as employees, which most of us are, we should remember that we have a voice. We have a voice to say what we think. And as leaders, we have to prioritize our team first. Because if we do, we will be like Herb Keller, one of my heroes. He ran Southwest Airlines for over 40 years with not one year not being profitable, which in the airline industry is unheard of. And he did this by putting the people first. So I can just tell you that if you emphasize the employees, everything else will follow. Thank you.